Welcome to the Thriving Farmer Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Kilpatrick. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and celebrate sustainable farming. We believe that you can build a profitable, sustainable farm that gives you true farm freedom. Join us as we talk to farmers, innovators, educators, and entrepreneurs to glean their top takeaways in business and life. Hey, Thriving Farmers, Michael Kilpatrick here with a special episode of the Thriving Farmer Podcast. So today we are talking all about our upcoming Mushroom Summit. Now, I know what you're saying, mushrooms are weird, mysterious creatures, and they don't have a part on your farm, but I would disagree. And that's what I've been spending the last three months figuring out. So let's talk a little bit about first about our summit. So last year we ran the Thriving Farmer Summit, which was incredibly wildly popular. We've had over almost 60,000 people uh, reserve a ticket for the uh, summit and, uh, you know, thousands have sent us uh, emails or messages and just said, hey, thank you so much for putting this together. This has been so helpful for me and my farm. And the Summit model is a great way for people to learn about a topic and to uh, get lots of great information. And so we said we should run another one. Now, in that time frame, one, a couple of the folks that we interviewed was Adam um, Cohen and also was uh, William Padilla Brown. And both of them were on mushrooms and they were very interesting talks, something I was very interested in. So a couple months later, I started growing some mushrooms in my basement and had a a wildly fascinating time with that. And I'm actually going to link to a video that Charlotte, my daughter and I did, um, about growing the mushrooms in our basement. Um, she was very excited about it. Wanted to tell everyone about how it worked. And I think she was four or maybe just turned five at the time, but she had had a lot of fun telling people about that. And most people just watched the video for her. So, but what that kind of in, in me, it kind of created a, a need, a want to learn more about the fungi kingdom and, and everything that uh, it does for us. So started doing more research, tried to reach out to more people in the industry, made some more connections and decided that we should have this year's summit be on mushrooms. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, mushrooms are incredibly important. They are, there's so many things that they do for us. For one thing, they heal us. Um, there's mushrooms out there. There's six major mushrooms out there. Well, actually, there's 15 medicinal mushrooms that we use, but there's six major ones, and we'll go into those later on. Um, but there's they heal us. The lion's mane works with our brain and it helps with our brain function. They can even they feed us. Obviously, we eat mushrooms. Um, there's so many different types of mushrooms that we eat, and that's part of what we talk about in day one of the summit, just all the different ways you can eat mushrooms. They clothe us. There's people out there that are making designer um, fixtures as well as clothes with mycelium, um, designer medicine. So another aspect of it is that the fungi can actually fight bacteria. And so there's some amazing work being done um, with some of our speakers. They're talking about how that's working. Um, remediate. So there are fungi and mycelium that will eat oil or eat uh, you know nasty things in the soil. And uh, so that's actually being used to remediate different areas around the world from natural disasters as well as there's a lot of supplements that you can use them for as well. So there's so many things that mushrooms do for us. And so that's why we really wanted to do the summit. And so what we did is we interviewed, I think it's around 30 different speakers about all things mushroom. They're spoken in the three different days. Day one is all about why mushrooms, you know, the crucial role they play, um, how important they are to the survival of our species, all the different ways that we benefit from them. Day two is all about getting started with mushrooms. So we talk about foraging, we talk about starting your mushroom farm, we talk about innovative ways to get set up, um, low cost ways to make it work on your farm. Even we have some uh, very learned professors and also uh, consultants in the industry talk about the, the advantages happening right now. So if you're an advanced mushroom grower, there's definitely some presentations for you. And then day three is all about um, marketing. It's about uh, funding your mushroom farm. It's about uh, selling more of your products. It's about um, different ways you can uh, leverage your mushroom farm to make more income. If you're just not wanting to grow more mushrooms through classes and selling substrate and selling different aspects of different things around mushrooms. So uh, the, it's a kind of a wide ranging and it's really, I mean, if you're a home gardener, if you're looking to just grow mushrooms on your countertop, if you're looking to just learn more about the massive fungi world that we live in, 
as well as if you're looking to add mushrooms as a business to your farm. We go everything from the low, again, the low tech, everything from just using simple uh, outdoor grows and uh, starting with some logs for really, really cheap all the way to how to build out a fully functioning automated mushroom system. Now, one of the cool things about mushrooms is we'll get into this obviously in the summit is how much income they can generate per cubic foot. And we talk cubic feet because obviously when you're building a mushroom room, you can go vertical too. So we have most people are going, you know, as high as they can reach the harvest. Um, but it's unlike things, let's say like ground you by square feet, you can only go one level mushrooms. You can stack. So literally you can do hundreds of dollars per square foot per year. And so that's why it's such an attractive um, system for people to get into. But, you know, I want to just talk about some of the amazing speakers that we have, because seriously, um, there are so many amazing speakers from across around the world, really, that shared their expertise um, to help us bring this summit together. And I just want to talk about, you know, some of the ones and, and what they share and what you're going to learn during this summit. So first up is Trad Cotter. Now, Trad is... Um, owner at Mushroom Mountain. Um, he's been in the industry for almost 20 years, has some great books out. You know, it's on my uh, my uh, coffee stand. You know, the book, his, his major book out is where I'm always constantly referencing it. So he's got a great book out and he talks about really pushing the boundaries, how mushrooms are healing us, housing us, saving our planet. Talks about making building materials out of mushroom. Talks about some of the um, antibiotic work they're doing with mushrooms. Even talks about some of the special mushrooms that are actually helping people deal with um, mental um, uh, illnesses and uh, PSTD. So again, some fascinating stuff. Trad is a expert when it comes to all of this. And so he just rapid fire took us through all the cool, innovative things that are happening. And again, really want to thank Trad for actually doing the, the summit with us. I know he's a very busy guy. Um, we've also on day one got Ryan and Emily. Now, Ryan and Emily run the mushroomhunting.org. And what they do is they teach about how to forage for mushrooms. So they talk about how to go into um, the forest and forage for mushrooms, how to make sure that they are the right mushrooms because there are a lot of mushrooms out there. 1% of the mushrooms out there will kill you. I think it's like 15 or 20% of the mushrooms out there will make you sick. And, uh, you know, it's only like a 25% that will actually are, you know, edible. I could have that t statistic wrong because, again, I'm no expert here. But I just spent 30, um, over 30 hours interviewing all these experts. So, again, we have lots of fascinating information. Um, so they were great to talk about foraging. They even talked about, you know, chaga, some of the different things out there and, uh, you know, the different uh, wild forage mushrooms that you can go out there, both edible just for eating as well as medicinal for things for um, you know, for health purposes as well. So Merlin Sheldrake was another um, speaker we talked to, and Merlin wrote a book called Entangled Life. So he's a biologist, um, did a lot of research around mushrooms, and his, his book Entangled Life is fabulous. It talks everything from being in the jungles and dealing with mycelium there and cordyceps and all different uh, truffles, and he even goes into um, some of the, the mycelium and the work they're doing. The mycelium are actually helping people find the best roots in um, creating highways and stuff between cities. They have it's really cool that they talk about in his book. So I highly recommend you grab his book. But first, just listen to the interview. Um, it's it's it goes. I go through his book and just talk about the different aspects of uh, why he wanted to talk about mushrooms and the different. Um, amazing things that they do in our lives and how they affect us in so many different ways. So on day one, we also have some other fabulous ones. We have ones talking about truffles, truffle magic, you know, um, how they affect us. We have Tina Ellor. Now, Tina works for one of the largest mushroom farms, in the, especially mushroom farms in the U.S., Phillips Mushrooms. And she docks for a, a while about the lion's mane mushroom, which is the, one of the coolest mushrooms. If you don't know what a lion's mane looks like, you'll definitely want to check out the summit just to see how cool they are and how healthy they are from you for us. So they uh, do everything from help with menopause. They really help with um, our mental capacity. And it's, it's really the research is 
cut and dried. It's clear cut that they really do help with our mental capacity. So, um, you know, that's something I actually take as a daily supplement is lion's mane. And so, uh, Tina walks us through that. She talks, walks us through how to grow them as well as multiple recipes on how to cook them. The thing about the lion's mane is it tastes like seafood. So, um, very, uh, delicious flavor. And uh, she's got some great recipes she shared on that as well. We also had Jess Starwood. Now, Jess is a West Coast forager, um, cookbook author, chef, um, does a lot of cool things and has a new book coming out this coming year. So we talk just a little bit about that, but more about her life as a forager and just the cool lifestyle she's built for herself, traveling the West Coast in a camper van and uh, finding very cool mushrooms and then bringing them back to the chef's in um, uh, the West Coast, bigger cities. So that's some really cool stuff. We have Gary. Gary joined us from Kenneth Square area. He talks about the exact steps that the commercial guys used in production of button mushrooms. So he walks us through a button mushroom production system. We've got Steve Gabriel, and Steve is um, with the mushroom research at Cornell Small Farm Program. So again, he walks us through a lot of the cool research they're doing shares some really cool uh, training on how to get started for cheap. And um, just, you know, kind of like the different profit points and different enterprises you can do in the mushroom industry. Then we got Charles Barber. Charles is an agronomist, a father, an herbalist. Um, he's a farmer and he has a supplement line company. So again, you know, I really didn't want to interview like, you know, one of these folks out there that was just going to say, oh, buy my mushroom product. Um, and of course, Charles has some products for sale, but he really talks about mushrooms and like why they're good for us. He talks about, you know, cordyceps and how they are like the um, food of endurance athletes. He talks about the lion's mane. He talks about the rishis. He talks about the, the all the different ones that are really good for us and like how to formulate them. So he not only just talks about, um, you know, what, how, why they're good for you, he talks about how to formulate, if you're gonna grow mushrooms yourself or harvest wild ones, how to formulate to make your own tinctures and stuff like that. So it's a fascinating conversation with him. It's, it's deep too. We really go deep um, on how that all works. Okay, let's see who else. So day two, that was just all day one, folks. You know, <laughs> we've got day two and day three. So day two is our biggest day of the summit. Again, because it's all about how to get started. So we go deep into doing mushrooms. So first is Adam, Adam Sainer. And Adam and um, Eric, they're partners over at Grow Cycle. So they have a company in the UK, which not only grows mushrooms, but teaches folks how to grow low um, input uh, low tech mushroom growing. So again, you can do one of the things that people talk about when they do mushrooms is, oh my gosh, you have to really pasteurize everything and there's so much expensive equipment and you can blow things up. Well, yes, you can if you do high tech, I mean like high pressure steam. I mean, I saw a picture the other day of someone blowing up a, a canner trying to do some, um, trying to heat pasteurize or sterilize some uh, straw, and that was not pretty, and I'm sure incredibly dangerous. But there are very low tech ways to do it. So that's what Adam walks us through. He talks us through the entire process of how to get started, literally, with materials you might find if you're a farmer, you probably absolutely already have all the things you need to start growing mushrooms, uh, besides some spawn, you probably need some spawn, um, but you probably already have a lot of the things. So Adam's gonna just walk us through that. Then we have Tim. Now, this is a really cool thing. Tim reached out to me and said, Michael, look, I want to be on your summit, but I just, I'm a farmer. I'm in the middle of the backwoods of, of, um, of Kentucky. And I actually went and visited him because he said, come down to the farm. I was absolutely going that direction for uh, a, a conference I had to go to. So I swung by his place. We did an interview on his farm. He actually walked us around his mushroom farm. He has an incredibly beautiful farm. So I, I drove up in the middle of the woods we walked around the farm. We looked at his mushroom um, business. He showed us the different types of mushrooms he produces. He actually gives us a demonstration on how to inoculate uh, logs, both the conventional way, which is by drilling holes, and then a new way that he's developed, which is actually much quicker and much easier, um, that he says actually works faster. And so he walks us through the different ways of inoculating logs. He shows us like the best practices for setting that outdoor mushroom farm up. 
as well as shows us some tasty mushrooms as well. So that was fascinating to be on site with Tim and just really be able to show in detail how he sets that up and how he's built a beautiful um, business for himself. So basically half his business is from his on-farm logs and the other half is him going out wild foraging. So we talk about that as well. Now, next up is William. Now, I mentioned earlier that William shared last year on our summit, and he did more of a general presentation then. But this year, he came back and shared deep on cordyceps. So he talks about his cordy quest, you know, the history, the cultivation, the use of cordyceps mushrooms. He talks about, you know, the permaculture aspects of it. He talks about, you know, how healthy they are for us and, um, you know, what the future of the industry is, you know, how cordyceps are changing us as farmers and um, how there are so many farmers are now profiting with them and just how healthy they are for us. So we also have Logan. Now, Logan is a, uh, a, a farmer and a forager on the West Coast, and he shares about um, mycoforestry. So he talks about the role that fungi play in the woods. He talks about how we can profit from that. He talks about just the different aspects of that and why that that's so important and it just it's fascinating the role that fungi play in our forest if we didn't have fungi in the forest there'd be nothing that would break down the wood like they do and we literally if we think that right now the west coast is a tinderbox every summer you know it's burning up with fire it would be 10x that we wouldn't be able to live on the planet without fungi in relationship to the forestry aspect of that Next up is Willie Crosby. Now, Willie is over at Fungi Alley. Now, Willie spent the last number of years, nine years in fact, working with mushrooms. So he started off with just our general mushroom production farm, rapidly realized that it was much better suited to being a, a spawn producer. And so now he teaches all about mushrooms and he produces um, spawn. So he's taught several different online courses with Cornell University and UMass Amherst and received five different SARE grants and six other grants over the last five years for growing mushrooms and educating the public around mushrooms. So Willie does a fabulous job walking you through exactly how to start your mushroom business and the different areas to get started with. Because the thing with mushrooms is there's so many different aspects. You can produce spawn, you can produce um, cultures, you can produce blocks, you can grow mushrooms with just blocks, you can do uh, logs in the woods. So Willie walks you through all of that and really shares the different aspects of how you can get set up. And he also gives us some examples of mushroom production farms. So he walks us through a couple different setups and shows us, you know, the different aspects of how they are making everything work. Um, you know, it's interesting. Some of these folks are in a spare bedroom. Maybe some of them are in a basement. Um, a a two-car garage can easily produce a couple grand a week in mushroom sales. So it's, it's fabulous to just to see all the different ways these different presenters are, are industry in the industry and how they're making um, mushrooms fit into their farm, into their lifestyle, and profiting. So we also have Jordan. So Jordan is a Jordan gent. He's of... Texas Fungus, which is the other speaker we had last year in the summit, and his partner, which is Adam. And so Jordan actually goes deep with us, and he shares about the lab process. So he got started you know, in 2007 with a mushroom kit. He got started with that. He tried uh, growing uh, mushrooms on his counter. It didn't work. So he stumbled onto the mushrooms and YouTube and dived into all things mushrooms, started growing a year later. And now in 2020, Adam and himself are now producing 500 pounds a week on their mushroom farm and they're both full-time on the farm. So he dives deep into um, agar plates. He talks about cleaning a strain of mycelium, shows how to inoculate and it's production bags and uh, you know does a little bit of a photo tour through the different production process at their farm in texas so we also have some quick interviews too so again we some, we went in some of these they're deep dives they're deep into a very specific topic we uh you know just thrash it out we learn all about it i ask a bunch of questions and here's the other thing too is we have some pre-submitted talks which are great but a lot of these are from me asking questions as the presenter walks through and talks about their production system. So, you know, we talk deeply about the health benefits, but then we also do some like case studies or interviews. So this one was with Drew Zimmerman. Now Drew last year was just growing for hobby. 
2020 hits, COVID hits, he loses his job. Well, he is making lemonade out of lemons and he goes ahead and decides to dive full-time into mu uh, mushrooms and he builds a business. Literally in six or seven months, um, you know, started this spring, he's now full-time on his mushroom farm foraging and growing production mushrooms. Now, thing about Drew is he's doing an incredibly low-tech outdoor production system. It's kind of like a low tunnel and uh, he walks us through it. He shows us the different aspects, how he's got that set up, how he's profiting, how he's feeding his family, making it work in a very saturated mushroom market. So the other thing cool is mushrooms are, for the general aspect of things, very new to the US. And actually most of the specialty mushrooms eat in the US are still coming from out of country. So we need to change that. And so that's part of my goal of the Mushroom Summit is to help farmers who are already doing amazing, cool things at a very profitable enterprise to their farms with mushrooms and uh, be able to change that. So we have more US-based food pro products. And um, you know, one of the other things I wanted to mention is I started learning about mushrooms, you know, a year or two. Obviously, before that, I've been to farmers markets. I'd seen them. We've bought them in the past. You've eaten them, but I really started diving into mushrooms deep about eight or ten months ago. And so the cool thing is, I've been learning. So I, when I interview these folks, I'm not coming at it from an expert expert level. I, you know, I, I feel like I learned so much during this summit. I've, I, I have an indefinite more uh, knowledge now. But the cool thing is as I'm interviewing, I'm able to ask questions from all different stages and understanding the different levels. So a few of my questions on the summit, I'll be honest with you, are probably a little stupid. <laughs> Anyone who's been around to be like, oh, Michael, that's a beginner question. You don't need to ask that. Um, but the cool thing is I pull, I'm able to pull out from these speakers the nuggets, the really great things that they're saying, some of the details that uh, might go unnoticed because I am just that thirst of knowledge to learn about mushrooms. So again, it's been fabulous learning from these different speakers. And another one we interviewed, which was fun, is Roger and Mary. Now, Roger and Mary are out in Indiana, and they wanted to add a new enterprise to their farm, but they didn't want to spend a lot of money on infrastructure. So literally, they invested like 150 bucks and then started growing mushrooms in their tunnel. So they have a, a caterpillar tunnel um, and they just started growing mushrooms in there. They showed exactly step-by-step step how they did it. They also really cool is they show the exact financials. So they say, this is how much the blocks cost. This is how much my um, my, my misting system costs. This is how much the, the temperature system costs. So they walk us through all of that, which is really cool to talk to them and see how they've set that up. So the cool thing is we interview brand new beginners. We also interview industry experts. So we get the full range of people during this summit. Now let's take a quick break and we'll be back in a little bit with more on the Mushroom Summit. Okay, so we've been talking Mushroom Summit. Now you're like, Michael, how do I get involved? Um, and the cool thing is this is 100% free for you to join us to attend the Mushroom Summit. Just go to farmsummits.com forward slash mushroom. Okay, that's all you have to do, farmsummits.com forward slash mushroom, and you will find all the information about the summit. Now, even if you are listening to this, you know, six months, a year after this airs, still go there because there's still going to be free information for you to get involved, figure out how to attend and uh, get more information on, on all things mushrooms. So again, www.farmsummits.com forward slash mushroom. All right, so let's dive back into the episode and I'm gonna to talk to you about the rest of the summit. Next up, John Holiday. Now again, as I was saying, John is an accomplished senior research scientist with more than 40 years of experience across the um, industries and he is a mushroom consultant. So that's what he does as a, a livelihood. You know, he travels the world, helps mushrooms farms get set up, everything from small specialty to the largest mushroom farms in the world. So again, he was super, um, it was super nice to be able to get him to come on to the summit and share his expertise. And what he did is talk us through you know, some of the major advances happening right now in the mushroom world. So, um, you know, especially the specialty mushroom industry is growing so fast. I mean, in the last 10 years, 
it's doubled in size. So when you see growth like that, you're seeing some major innovations. So John talks us through the different innovations that are happening, kind of some of the protocols that are like you know, industry across now and some of the different um, inventions he's actually made in the last couple of years that have really helped folks move forward with their mu mushroom production. And he also talks through the investment too. So he walks through, you know, let's say you decide to set up a full size production system, spend $100,000 on it. He talks about how that would look, what that would be, and all the aspects of that. So again, we've got John sharing this. Then we got Willie, who's the complete opposite. Willie's sharing how to get started for cheap. And then we have Drew and we've got Roger and Mary showing exactly how they did it, okay? So that's really cool. All right, let's move to day three, because day two, again, all about production. We've walked through so many different folks showing all different levels of how production works on the, the mushroom farm. And then day three is how to profit from your mushroom farm. So we're also showing how to market. We're also showing how to um, sell to restaurants, how to sell to uh, farmer's markets, innovative packaging, value adding. So all of this is on day three. So on day three, we started with Eric Jong. Now, Eric is, again, the other half of Grow Cycle, an innovative social enterprise, the mushroom farm based in the UK. And he, what he walks us through is six innovative ways to make more mushroom money on your mushroom farm without growing more mushrooms. So again, let's say you're at a mushroom farm. You've got, you're producing a couple hundred pounds a week. You've maxed out your grow area. You don't want to do any more but you wanna make some more money. Maybe you're part-time, you wanna go full-time. You're full-time, you just wanna add an employee, you wanna make your life simpler. So what Eric does is say, here's some innovative ways to add more income. So add some classes. He walks us through how they do classes. He walks us through how they sell substrate. He walks us through um, some of the installations they've done, the education they do in schools and stuff like that. So very fascinating how the different ways they're adding education and uh, the different you know, value channels and uh, even, even the uh, value added things they're doing on their farm. Now, one of the biggest ways to make money in the mushroom industry is through selling ready to fruit kits. So um, I've grown them in the past, you know, way back maybe 10 or 15 years ago when I was younger. Actually, wait a minute, to come to think of it, it is a, probably a solid 15 years ago because that would have been back in 2002 we got our first mushroom grow kit. So um, someone gave it to us as a gift. We actually fruited it under our bathroom sink because that was one of the places they recommended that would have been the most moist. And uh, we got some mushrooms, they weren't great, but that kind of is something that always you know, sparked a long time ago that this is such a cool thing. Well, fast forward 15 years and mushroom grow kits are huge. Um, there's entire companies that do that. And the really cool thing is if you sell mushrooms, People also want grow kits because they want to try it at their, their own on their countertop, especially in this time of pandemic. Being able to do something fun at home on your countertop, people are so excited about that. So um, Eric walks us through all those different ways, shows us the different ways you can do that. And um, again, fascinating interview with him. He's a great guy and uh, he and Adam brought so much value to the summit. Um, they really helped us from the beginning find a lot of the speakers too. So they helped us uh, you know, canvas the industry, told us, hey, these people are good, these people are good, you wanna talk to these folks. So again, I can't thank them enough for their help with putting this summit on. Now, next up on day three is Alex. Alex Winstead is owner and founder of Cascadia Mushrooms. Now, if you wanna see a well thought out, um, just like precision operation, this is the presentation for you. So Alex walks us through exactly how they set up their mushroom farm that produces about a thousand pounds of mushrooms a week. Um, they do mostly shiitake mushrooms. Um, we kind of geek out. We geek out on the, the heating systems, the humidity systems. We geek out on the, the cultivation, the recipes they're using, and the marketing and sales. So he shares a lot of that, and it's, it's a great um, presentation and one I highly suggest um, that you focus on for day three. We also on day three have Dan Miller. Now, Dan Miller is um, talks about mushroom money, crowdfunding for mushroom farmers. So again, you get started with mushrooms, and the thing about mushroom farming is you get started on a shoestring. I mean, a couple hundred bucks, you're in business. And we show that too in the Mushroom Summit. So we have a, a training in the Mushroom Summit where we actually walk you through three different size of grow sets up. So you know you can do it on your countertop. We teach that to take a storage container and convert it to growing mushrooms. 
We teach you how to take a metro rack um, to grow, you know, like maybe 20 or 30 blocks at a time. And then we also show you a walkthrough of a massive, well, I guess for me it was massive, a pretty good operation that will do 500 pounds a week too, fruit 500 pounds a week. So we walk, that's one of the things, trainings we have in the Mushroom Summit. So again, definitely worth checking that out as well. But Dan Miller walks us through, if you wanna get started, how to crowdfund for that. So he's um, CEO of Steward, um, which is a innovative crowdfunding platform for farmers. And so he walks us through the different ways to use that. Then we've got Lori Rice. Now Lori Rice is actually a food photographer. And you're like, why is she speaking? Well, she has spent a number of years working with the Mushroom Council to actually help mushroom farmers sell more mushrooms. She talks about how to take great pictures of mushrooms, and then she also talks about how to create great recipes around your mushrooms too. Um, because again, if you have beautiful pictures as well as tasty recipes, you can very easily double your sales. Because the thing about especially mushrooms is still, so many people don't know what to do with them. They've never heard of a lion's mane. Once they try it, they're sold for life and they'll come back week after week and pay top dollar for beautiful mushrooms. But before that, they need to be sold on why that's important for them to buy and that's a tasty mushroom. So Lori was fabulous, very upbeat, energetic, gave some great conversations and step-by-step -step instructions to make this happen. The next up is Jessica. Now, Jessica is actually on our team. She's one of our um, team members, and she talks about using Canva to create great social media graphics. So she talks about you know some of the graphics you see for our summit, for our just the Thriving Farmer products are beautiful. So she walks you through exactly how we do that in Canva. It's a very simple program. It's incredibly powerful, and uh, you know as a team, we create beautiful graphics that most people think are created in, let's say, Photoshop or very complicated with a very simple, um, it's a free program, Canva's a free program, but we've actually hacked it and uh, do some beautiful images in it. So she walks you through exactly how we do that so that you can represent your mushroom farm incredibly well and sell more mushrooms. Um, two more speakers, folks. We've got Adam Cohen. So again, the duo from Jordan and Adam at Texas Fungus Adam really walks us through how they went from nothing. So both of them were full-time working other places. And within 18 months, they both had quit their jobs and were full-time on their mushroom farm. All of this in a 2,000 square foot old mechanics garage. So they basically rented a 2,000 square foot unair conditioned mechanics garage in uh, the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. And 18 months later, they're both full-time on the mushroom farm, crushing it. So Adam walks us through step-by-step -step how they do that. He showed us the original setup. He showed us, it shows us every step along the way. He talks about their marketing too. So in order to do that, they had to have an incredibly aggressive and professional marketing. So he talks through how they approach chefs. He talks about how they've done value adding. He talks about their different farmer's market setups. It's very interesting the different value added things they're doing and how they're profiting with their mushroom farm. So again, um, Adam's been great. He's been a mentor to me as I've started in my mushroom growing journey. And uh, again, you know, his text thread or messenger thread back and forth with him and me, it's very extensive. There's probably an education right there. I mean, probably for one of the sessions, I should just read the thread back and forth and you guys will get a, a good uh, education on, on, on exactly how to fruit mushrooms and how to get set up. So last but not least is Erica Tebbins, who is um, our, my dynamic duo on our Farmer's Market Success course, which is one of our signature courses that teach you how to sell at Farmer's Market. So Erica's joining me to talk about how to sell without feeling sneezy, how to not be the lowest price vendor and still sell out at Farmer's Market. She talks about how to attract customers, convert into sales, build your business, and scale up with raving fans. So again, a great conversation, really all about sales. So even if you're not thinking of selling mushrooms, this session right here is really gonna help you if you wanna sell at farmer's markets. So again, there you go, folks. That is our incredible mushroom summit. We have so many great presentations. Again, I can't thank our incredible speakers enough for sharing all their information on how to profit with mushrooms, um, you know, add them to your life. 
how to heal yourself with them, how to profit with them. Um, even, you know, if you don't want to sell them, you just want to connect with a local mushroom farmer. We also have resources on that to sell their products or integrate their products with your other products. But I, I, I guarantee once you go through the summit, see just how easy and how fun it is to grow mushrooms. I mean, here's the cool thing. Oyster mushrooms, you put the fruiting blocks in the fruiting room, and we've done this because we've already started fruiting in our room. Um, five to seven days later, you're pulling out a couple pound hand of mushrooms. And again, and then if you go to our um, the website, farmsummits.com forward slash mushrooms, you will find um, you know pictures. You'll find that you get signed up for the summit. So you can join us for three days of mycelium craziness or mycelium madness, I guess we could call it. So yeah, I want you to definitely come join us, learn about mushrooms. And the cool thing about mushrooms, you know, they're profitable. I said that earlier, but I kind of wanted to reiterate that because the thing about mushrooms is usually like with every $1 of inputs you put in, you pull out $3 of mushrooms. So let's say you are putting in a $10 block, easily that will produce $30 in mushrooms, if not more, especially if you value add that. And then the cool thing about the mushroom block is that that's still full of mycelium. You can feed it to earthworms. You can put it in your, if you have a vegetable production farm, compost it. It's amazing for your soil. So there's all sorts of things you can do with that as well. But the, it's very profitable, very small space. So our production facility, which we've uh, completely built out now, we're actually starting the fruit mushrooms in it. And we'll show you know how that's working and how we're making that work. That will produce... 500 pounds of mushrooms a week. And that is a 16 by 23 by 12 foot tall building. So again, very small space, lots of production can come from that and relatively efficient. So one of the biggest thing with mushrooms is you gotta keep it clean. So that's one of the biggest actually things of that is just you know making sure everything's clean. Um, but other than that, harvesting doesn't take that long. Um, the systems are mainly automated or you can set up the mainly automated systems. So it actually is a very um, easy production system depending on how you get it set up. And again, there's a lot of ways you can get started with mushrooms. I mean, you can get started by doing it A to Z. So everything from making your own cultures to your own spawn, to your own blocks, to your own, um, then fruiting them out. Or you can do very simple, literally uh, drill some holes in some oak logs um, and put some spawn in them and then spring and fall harvest shiitake mushrooms. Um, or like we're doing is for now, we're just gonna be fruiting out blocks that we're buying in. So a lot of ways to get started, but it's profitable and it's really fun. My kids are absolutely thrilled. They wanna go out with me every morning and night to check the mushrooms and uh, they'll stand there and uh, just you know squeal with the light when they see these beautiful you know three pound clusters of mushrooms that are just coming right off the, the blocks. And they've enjoyed eating them too. So now both of them, at the first, they were a little bit squeamish about them. But now both of them, and <laughs> tonight we actually had mushrooms for dinner because we're producing them in our mushroom grow room and we're eating them, testing them. And uh, Simon was two-fisting it, you know, picking them right up off the plate. And again, we're not training him to do this, but this is how, you know, a three-year-old, <laughs> they eat their dinner. And again, you're grateful that they're eating their dinner. So you kind of accept their own way of eating it. So he's actually, you know, double-fisting it, both hands, shoving the mushrooms into his mouth, asking for more. All right. So now I feel like I'm just rambling a little bit, but you can tell I'm excited. And you know, it's really been interesting starting 10 months ago, growing some mushrooms in our basement on some straw and really knowing that this is something that really could help so many farmers add another source of income to their farm and feed people great food. Because the thing is 90% of the mushrooms produced in the US are button mushrooms and they're all right, but even like the four varieties in the store, which people think are four different types of mushrooms, are actually all from the button mushroom, all the same type of mushrooms. And so getting people involved in growing specialty mushrooms not only gives you another incredible source of income, but also feeds our communities and heals our communities with all the cool cordyceps and the lion's mane and the rishis, you know, all those really great for you mushrooms as well. So I really want you to join us at the Mushroom Summit. Not only has this been a fabulous education learning experience for me, um, you know, share all the training that we've we've learned over the last two months as we've done all these interviews, but it's going to be able to for you to get revitalized this year, learn so much from so many different mushroom farmers that are doing so many cool things across the industry, and if you want, start your own mushroom farm, or just. 
be thoroughly educated in all things mycelium. So join us. It's farmsummits.com forward slash mushroom. Looking to start or grow your farm business? You need a compelling farm plan that you can share with investors, convince your significant other with, or just to give yourself peace of mind. We have created a new program called the Start Your Farm Intensive. In it, you'll learn how to develop your farm idea to make sure you take all the factors into consideration for your context and your climate. You'll learn how to craft a one-page business plan that helps clearly define your target customer and lay out the necessary characteristics of your business. You will understand the three financial documents that every farm needs to fill out to make sure you are making money. And we'll give you all that as templates too. So you have the templates to fill out for your farm business. We'll also go through funding. So where to go for funding for the various stages and parts of your business. Starting a farm is hard. Starting a farm without a proven plan is almost impossible. Join us today. Go to growingfarmers.com forward slash start for more information. Now, what did past students have to say? Corey says, the exercises and spreadsheets helped me make the learning process easier and more real. Jenna says, I gained the support system and resources I needed for when I'm ready for the next step. And finally, the worksheets make you think out every aspect of the business step by step. Go ahead, join us today, growingfarmers.com forward slash start. Next week on the podcast, I have Sam McLemore, who is a farmer down in Starkville, Mississippi. So he talks all about how he farms in the steaming heat. Um, He has a CSA. He talks about some recent equipment upgrades he made and why he made them. Talks about managing his team, how he's hired on people um, that are a good fit for his farm, and the different things he's doing to build soil fertility on his heavy clay farm in the Deep South. So join me next week as I interview Sam. So there you have it. Another episode in the books. So I'd love if you would hop on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. Those mean everything to us. We love to hear what you're thinking. If you have a podcast guest that you can recommend, please pop on over to the Thriving Farmer podcast website and leave us a review. That's thrivingfarmerpodcast.com.